This is Witchbase News for Friday the 8th of November 2024. I'm Commander Burr. An Elite Dangerous news this week. David Braben is interviewed about Elite Dangerous. We've a bunch of power play guides and resources to help you get stuck into the games new superpower meta game and player numbers surge as Ascendancy arrives and news of the colonization feature takes hold. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ping the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support our channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. An article appeared on the Epic Games Store on Halloween last week all about Elite Dangerous, the Thargoid War and the stage we're at with it now and it included a few quotes within it from an interview conducted with Senior Director of Projects at Frontier Piers Jackson and Frontier's President and Founder David Braben. The piece details some of the history humanity has with the Thargoids largely involving us trying to wipe them out in various extremely unpleasant but imaginative ways. But perhaps most interestingly it also discusses how the Thargoids might perceive us and why they might react to us in the way that they do. They are after all, as far as we know, huge multi-limbed insect like creatures who grow rather than manufacture their galaxy spanning technology. It's hard to imagine a species that is more alien when compared next to our highly evolved mammalian AP selves. The article is light on any really juicy details but it's worth a read nonetheless if only for the fact that David and Piers were involved in it. What is very interesting however is the fact that the article even exists at all. Interviews with David or any of the inner circle team at Frontier when it comes to Elite Dangerous are a rarity in themselves so the mere fact of its existence seemingly somewhat apropos of nothing could be taken as further encouragement although it was honestly needed given the year we've just had that FDev is still fully invested and behind Elite Dangerous and its future. Whether you choose to believe its singular focus on all things Thargoid and literally nothing else that is very front and centre in Elite Dangerous right now is significant or not I will leave up to you. All I will say however is that the war is apparently as far as we know about to end. I did find that focus intriguing. You'll find the interview linked in the description below this video. It's fair to say at this point that the arrival of Powerplay 2.0 into the game has been almost universally well received. We'll speak more to this point in a moment but there is now a huge amount of engagement and interest in the system and the promotion of one superpower faction over another in the galaxy. Across multiple Discord servers, social media feeds and Elite Dangerous sub communities we've seen a dramatic upsurge of interest in Powerplay 2.0 and suffice to say it appears to have completely overtaken and swamped any level of engagement that the old extremely niche system ever had. Elite Dangerous has always been a complex game to play. Navigating a spaceship in a 1 to 1 scale recreation of the galaxy is after all no trivial thing but if there's one thing the Elite community has always been good at its support of newer commanders in the game. That propensity towards helping a fellow commander in their journey is not diminished however when it comes to helping veteran commanders alike come to terms with machinations of a newly introduced complex system in the game and as you can imagine Powerplay 2 is no exception in that regard. One of the challenges of Powerplay 2 can be working out just what activities are available and in what systems you can perform those activities. The information is available in game but it's not always obvious where to look for it. To that end then Commander Nowski has created a guide on the official Elite Dangerous forums that lists all the known activities that are listed in both the pilots handbook and the Powerplay information panels on the galaxy map. The guide lists what flavour of power play system state for what power player will support a given activity with short notes on how to perform each action. 
It serves as a great one stop quick look reference guide for the cockpit when you're working out what you want to do or what can be done for the system or state you're in. If however you need to take a step further back from that and you'd like to understand exactly what power play is, what it can give you and why you would want to engage with it then the excellent Mile 13 Gaming on YouTube has you covered with a fantastic video guide to exactly all that in an easy to understand, succinct and chapter headed run through of just what power play is and how it works. The guide runs through the different rewards the system offers, how to earn the all important merits that will allow you to rank up to a level that unlocks those rewards, the different system states and what they all mean, how to use the new tools on the galaxy map and more. And if you've taken a look at Powerplay and decided that it might be something you'd be interested in getting involved with then there are a plethora of Discord servers, subreddits, wikis and more that cover each Powerplay character specifically and aid in coordination and communication within that sub community. Once again returning to the official forums Commander Justinian Octavius has compiled a very helpful list of all the power players social media links and info dumps and as with everything I've listed here you'll find that linked in the description below this video. The rollout of the Ascendancy update continued to rumble through the galaxy this week bringing with it mostly positive changes but there have absolutely been one or two wrinkles that were delivered along with the update. Powerplay 2.0 is obviously a huge part of Ascendancy and being a very complex system with a massive number of moving parts it's not unreasonable to expect some issues in the initial rollout. After huge numbers of powerplay merits were being generated by vast dumps of exploration and exobiology data Frontier turned off the ability of those two activities to generate any merits at all while they worked on a solution to the unanticipated leaps in powerplay ranks that those commanders were gaining. The ability to gain merits from all things exploration was reactivated again about 6 days later but any data collected before the 7th of November 2024 at 6pm UTC will not be counted towards powerplay merits. The regular Thursday server bounce and resultant game downtime went on for a fair bit longer than usual this week while FDev ironed out some wriggles and we are still hearing reports of a fair few game crashes of the rainbow flavoured slithering and limbless reptile persuasion from across the community and fleet carrier bartender material trading is currently more broken than a fine china tea service in a spin dryer. It's currently serving nothing but transaction errors but overall considering what a huge change Powerplay 2 must be to the back end of the game the transition has been generally speaking relatively smooth. One significant side effect of the deployment of Powerplay 2, the Mandalay and almost certainly the announcement of the forthcoming galactic colonisation update is the increase in player numbers and overall engagement that Elite Dangerous is now seeing. It's impossible for us to get solid actual player numbers on Elite as Frontier keep those cards very close to their chest. However we can see how many players are playing the game via Steam and whilst the number itself is meaningless for example there are about 8 Elite Dangerous accounts spread across the family in this house alone and none of them use Steam to launch it the statistics from sites like steamcharts.com can very definitely show an overall trend. Trend. I've linked to Elite Dangerous on the Steam Charts site below if you want to dig into the numbers yourself but as a ballpark indication of what I'm talking about just in the last year since November 2023 Elite Dangerous has generally settled into daily peaks of around 4 to 5000 players with the occasional peak of around 7000 when there's something particular happening in the game. In the last week since Ascendancy arrived the weekend saw a peak activity at around 10,500 players and the number of players has been consistently higher than usual for any given time of day since. 
The last time that the player trend peaked as high as this was December 2022 around the start of the Thargoid invasion of the bubble. Again it's important to understand that these are not solid player numbers. This is an indication of a trend. The actual numbers are in fact much higher. Whilst obviously an undoubted positive for the game overall that solid win has itself surfaced with its own problems for the game and those playing it. Since ascendancy and the increase in player numbers there is a marked increase in the time that a regular vanilla flavoured hyperspace jump takes to complete with players spending a lot longer in the hyperspace tunnel. The most notable piece of negative impact has been seen in the increase in fleet carrier jump times overall but particularly during busier periods. A fleet carrier jump should be just for a 15 minute wait at the least but since the initial deployment of the player owned mega vessels Frontier has introduced flexible jump spool up times based on how busy the game is at the time and how many fleet carriers are therefore jumping at any given moment. In the last week particularly at the weekend jump times have spiked on occasions to over an hour making any spontaneous decision to jump a carrier impossible and forcing commanders to plan much more in advance or just choose to not use their super expensive personal travelling starports at all. Anecdotally we're also hearing reports from multiple sources that there is an overall trend of returning players who may have been put off after the problems surrounding the launch of Odyssey or they were just left somewhat cold by the games focus on the Thargoid war over the last 2 years. All this is of course happening with Ascendancy deployed but the backdrop of galactic colonisation is yet to arrive in the game and the surge in players that particular feature will bring is yet to be fully understood or indeed felt. The surge in player numbers and the positive change in how Elite is viewed and engaged with overall is a very nice problem to have for the dedicated player base and of course for Frontier. Did you find the Thargoid focus of the interview with David Braben intriguing? How is your second week with Powerplay 2.0 working out? Are you perhaps returning to Elite Dangerous after an extended break? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.